Hey again guys and welcome back. Today I want to talk about these capacitive touch switches. If you're only here to watch the first 30 seconds of the video, these things work fantastically between 2.5 and 5.5 volts. They are already pre-debounced. All you have to do is give it power ground and you have an output in the middle. If you want more information though, stick around. So really it is that simple. You just uh, give it 5 volts and ground. Uh, this one here is soldered right to pin headers. This one here is on a little uh, servo extension. And you just touch the thing and it lights up. So if that's all you need is a little debounced switch, that's all you really need to do. Um, also to be noted, um, right from the get-go, you actually don't have to touch it. You can just get pretty close. Whoops, I'm not even at the right height here. You just get pretty close and that'll work which means that you can actually put it on the inside of a case like say this one here from another maker and it works just the same see that? but let's take a closer look at um, what these things actually are first so here is a closer look at this touch switch as you can see on this side there's just a little touch pad and there are the three connections right here and if I flip this around there's the labels for those connections and so you've got uh, ground, IO and VCC VCC is anywhere between 2.5 and 5.5 volts this IO straight out of the box will give you a low signal until you go and touch the pad on the other side or come close to the pad on the other side and then it'll give you a high signal. It'll be pulled up to 5 volts or right next to it. Over here we also see a resistor and an LED. That resistor is labeled 121. That is 1, 2, and 10, one, so 120 ohms. And this LED is red, which is really useful because it lets you know when the output here goes high. Over here you see pad A, B, and an empty pad with no label. These are actually added functionality for this switch module. If you short pad A, then the switch will always be high and when you touch the switch it'll be pulled low. So basically it reverses the logic direction. Shorting pad B allows you to turn this into a toggle. So uh, it'll start in either high or low depending on the shorted pad over here. And then when you touch the switch, it'll go from whatever state it was to the opposite state. So let's say it started high, it'll toggle low, and it'll stay low until you click to toggle again. This other pad here is you can add capacitors to change the sensitivity of the touch switch. So let's grab one of the touch switches I already have pin headers soldered on, and let's start shorting these pads and see if we can actually take a look at that extra functionality. Let me see if I can actually solder this with my uh, inappropriate size tip, and if not, I'll have to swap. That was truly a pain in the butt, but I think I got it licked now. So let's go back to the breadboard and see what happened back in the breadboard now so I'm expecting when I touch this the LED will turn on and stay on and when I touch it again then it'll turn off and stay off on and off so there we go the toggle definitely works and please take note of this red LED underneath here the red LED tells us that it detected a touch so let's go short the other pad and see what behavior we get I'm going to see if I can get this one done now I think I got it. It's not pretty, but it should work. Let's toss it back in the breadboard and see what we observe. So I actually had to undo toggle mode to get this to work, and I guess that makes sense. So right when you boot up the board, 
um, the output is high and it stays high and the LED stays high until you touch. Once you touch it goes low and stays low only until you let go. It makes sense because if it's in toggle mode it'll just set one way or the other. Although I believe if toggle mode was still on then it would default when you turn on your device to um, have this output high. One more thing we can do and that's mess with the sensitivity. The smallest size capacitors I have are 0805 and that's an 0603 or even smaller pad. So there's no sense in trying to fit a larger footprint capacitor. So I'm going to try to solder on this uh, through hole capacitor. It might be slightly easier and this is a 10 nano. I think it says 103 on there. So I'm going to grab this with uh, some pliers because uh, this might get hot. It also might get difficult. Um, also, maybe you should flip it around. Oh, either way, this is not going to be good. Maybe I'll put it this way. Definitely not pretty, but it does have it where it counts. Let's give it a test in the breadboard. So for reference, here's the distance to the original one, unchanged. You know, with that grid on the breadboard, it's like 0.1 inches away. Now let's try the one with the 10 nano. Well, I guess that's a no for the 10 nano because already it's way too much capacitance. I can't turn this off. And let's just confirm that. Yeah. So whatever capacitor you put there to dim the sensitivity, it needs to be less than 10 nano. Interesting. So that's it. I think with that little play, um, you guys will be able to go off and make your own projects. Just make sure to uh, tie the I.O. to, let's say, a digital read on the Arduino. Or you can make it trigger a transistor, which will tr trigger a relay, which can trigger nearly anything. So let your imagination fly. If you don't have any of these, make sure to pick some up. They're actually uh, really cool to have around, very handy. And uh, I will leave a link in the description with the search terms on basically a search with uh, price plus shipping lowest first sorted uh, on eBay, which will be an affiliate link. So if you want to give me, I think it's maybe two cents if you buy uh, 10 of these, that'd be cool. Thanks for watching.